Hey guys, what is up? Today I'm going to be doing a video on my Brazilian Rainbow Bow Constrictor. I've been waiting a long time to do a follow-up video on him. My first video ever was actually about him, and I think he deserves a little more. It was pretty sloppily edited. Actually, I'm not sure if I did any editing at all, so I thought he deserved a little more, so I'm making a little follow-up video on him. Um, Yeah, and I'm sorry I haven't gone out to you guys with a video lately. I think it's been like two months or something crazy like that. But my summer was pretty hectic, and I just got back to school, so that's been stressing me out a lot. But for next two months, I hope to do at least weekly uploads. I have a whole bunch of videos edited. Um, this video did take a long time to edit, so that's why I'm starting pretty late on this little stream of uploads. But if you have any comments about what you want me to do next, then make sure to leave them in the comments section. And without further ado, let's get on with the video. Okay, now that we got that over with, I can introduce you guys to my buddy here, Drake. He is a Brazilian rainbow boa. He's a great ambassador for his species. His temperament is amazing. He was actually in a classroom. He's a rescue before I got a chance to get him. Um, I got him for a really good price, only $300 for the whole setup. I'll show you my setup later. Um, but he's really tame. He's been handled a lot. And he's about six years old, and I've had him for three years. So first off, we're going to be talking about what they eat. So for small rainbow boa constrictors, I usually feed them pretty small mice. This guy right here, he's about six years old, he's almost full grown, so I give him large to um, medium mice. And he is a very good eater. I can't speak for all rainbow boas, but this guy, he goes right for it. His digestion period is about, um, pretty much about a day. It can differ from a day to half a day, but I never hold him within two days of him eating. It stresses them out. It's, a it's already a pretty stressful time for them, and they will tend to bite a little more. So just make sure you don't hold them right after you feed them. But normally, these guys are pretty good eaters, and you won't have much trouble. So color-wise, these guys are very, very, very beautiful snakes. Um, they go from blue iridescence down to green iridescence, which is one of my favorite things about them. It's pretty um, dark out outside right now, so you can't see too much of it. They also have a heart about right where their heart is, if you can see that right there. I hope the camera's picking it up. They have a white stomach, and they're just a very beautiful snake. They have orange on the top, they segue down into beige on the bottom, and they're just a really cool looking iridescent snake, which obviously comes from their name, Rainbow Boa Constrictor. So, this guy, if you're looking for an aesthetic snake, I definitely recommend this guy. Um, there's a lot of other more beautiful snakes, but, Unfortunately, a lot of them are not very good at being handled, so if you want a snake that you could handle and it is also really cool looking, I definitely recommend one of these guys. Okay guys, so now we are going to be sectioning off to my room where I have my enclosure. Um, it's pretty elementary. Um, I got it when it just had paper towels in it and a few hides. Hide-wise, I use these. I have two of these, a humid hide and a cold side. Cold for these guys is about 7 degrees, um, 70 degrees at night, and hot is about 80 degrees at um, in the day. Um, that's pretty much what I do with these guys anyway. Um, they seem to do pretty good. I'll show you the thermometer up there and I'll explain it a little more. But pretty much I just use two of these hides and a humid hide right here, which he likes to hang out in. Um, and that's pretty much it for these guys. They don't need too much. You don't need to overwhelm them, but they'll do pretty well anyway. Any way you want to do it, um, just make sure they have a pretty big enclosure and make sure they have upwards of two hides and you're pretty much set. Okay, so now I'm going to be doing a little run through of Drake's tank here. Um, it's pretty simple, really. Very humid, as you can see here. There's an extra thermometer. It doesn't really work. It just shows a little of the temperature. Um, it's not really correct, so don't really worry about this. Um, some sphagnum moss. Um, also some Spanish moss. And we've got some fake plants over here. You obviously don't need the fake plants. Just for decor. Um, so here is one of the humid hides. Oh, here Drake is. So he's just hanging out in here. So yep, there he is. He likes this side. Um, this is a little cooler side. So here we have, I know, pretty funny. I just decided to name this. I don't know why. 
but this is a really full bowl of water. I always keep it really full just because it helps so much with the humidity, and he also goes in a lot, which is pretty surprising because the snakes I've had in the past really haven't spent that much time in their water. So that's kind of an interesting thing with him. I'm not sure if that goes for all boa constrictors or all rainbow boa constrictors, but that's just a little observation I've done with him. Um, here's the other human hide. I have this little reptile fabric I put down here. Um, he seems to like it. This is where he curls up and sleeps at night, um, right in the open, which is pretty funny. So right here, I have a little um, kind of lamp, kind of light. Um, it doesn't put out any heat, just so don't worry about that. The only purpose is just if I have a friend over or I'm feeding him, I just want a little more light, so I turn it on. It has a few settings, but you really don't have to have a light in here unless you want to be able to see him a little better. And lastly, this is just a little hideout I have made of spag sphagnum moss, and he likes to hide in it a little. Um, he's not in there as much as the other humid hides, but that's pretty much it for this tank. I really like it a lot. It's a really cool tank. It's been working a lot for me. And, well, there we go. So size-wise, these guys aren't that big of a snake. They get to about five feet, um, four feet for the males. I really really love this size it's very easy to handle they don't weigh too much they can't overpower you they definitely won't constrict you you'll be able to yank them right off they don't have that much muscle mass yet um this guy is full grown we think he's a male um that's why i refer to him as he so this is pretty much about the normal size as i said four feet he's almost full grown and they're just a really good snake if you have younger kids um teenagers they will definitely be able to handle this. If you're looking for a bigger snake, I definitely recommend Burmese pythons or blood pythons, but really a really good um, snake size to start off with. Um, they're just a really, really, really tame in lengthwise. You're not gonna get a rainbow bull constrictor that's seven feet. That's never gonna happen. I mean, this might happen in some zoo where they have a humongous enclosure, but another thing with these guys, the smaller the enclosure, they probably won't grow that much bigger, but you're really gonna want them to grow as big as they can, just health-wise. So don't take that as, oh, I don't want my snake to grow very small. I'm gonna put them in this size enclosure. You're gonna want about, I have them in 60 gallon, but I'll talk about that a little later. This guy, as I said, they don't get too big. Um, they're a really good beginner snake size. Availability-wise, these guys are readily available. I got mine from the White Plains Reptile Expo. He's doing really, really good. Um, the guy, he actually was selling him on the curb in front of the expo because he couldn't get anyone to take him off of eBay or Craigslist. So he was outside in front and I just picked him up because I felt bad for him. There was one in the expo with a little better colors, but I wanted to rescue this guy and it actually turned out that he was just shedding. And I didn't know that yet. He was actually only my second snake at that time. So I didn't know much about shedding. Um, but his colors are really good and I'm really happy I took him. I got him at the White Plains Reptile Expo, as I said. Um, it's in New York. I highly recommend it, but if you're not near there, these guys are sold even at Petco or All Pets Club. You guys can find these pretty much anywhere. Online breeders are, as always, a really good option. Make sure you're not inbred. Um, make sure you ask a lot of questions when you go to places like Petco or All Pets Club, just to make sure that they're not inbreeding them or that they're getting them from a, a reliable supplier okay guys so humidity wise i like to keep them at about 70 percent or higher um the way i do that is i put a big bowl of water in there which helps a lot and i make sure to include a lot of moss whether it be spanish or sphagnum moss just to hold the um just to hold the water and i spray them about three times a day that may seem pretty hard for a lot of people but i mean Right when you wake up, you spray them, and right when you go to sleep, you spray them, and just make sure you do it another time that day, and it actually isn't as bad as it sounds. But is right now, it's staying at about 60 to 80 um, percent, so that's pretty good. I have a thermometer, and I'll show you that right now. So as promised, here I have the thermometer for Drake's tank. It's really pretty simple, and it's been working pretty well, except the humidity gauge is kind of messed up right now. As you can see, it says 0% humidity, and that is definitely not the case, so that's that. But it's been doing a really good job keeping the temperature um, really high. Our house is about, like, 60 degrees. Don't ask why. My parents just like it really, really cold. 
but it's been doing a really good job of keeping the temperature up. It has some little valves in the middle of the tank that help heat it up. It sometimes segues over to about 83 degrees and it could get as low as 81 degrees, but it keeps it at about 82 degrees. That's what I have it set for. So it's been working really well. Okay, and that's pretty much all I have to do. So these guys are very dependent on the humidity, but with these guys, the substrate you're gonna be giving them, you should not have too many problems keeping up the humidity. Um, some of the side effects of low humidity are they could have more trouble shedding, and they could definitely have a lot of problems eating. And you never really want their um, scales to be scratched because if, if it's not as much humid in there, then they could definitely get scratched on the substrate a lot more. So that's just some important things humidity-wise to keep, um, keep a tab on with these guys. So. That's pretty much what I've learned there. Um, so as I said, humidity is a pretty big thing with these guys. So substrate wise, these guys are pretty lenient. Um, I have mine on cypress mulch. You could also put them on sphagnum moss. It really doesn't matter that much as long as it holds humidity and as long as when they're eating their prey, they don't accidentally digest it when they're going for the strike. Okay, so handling and temperament wise, these guys are usually pretty docile. I have heard cases of Right after they hatch, they are very aggressive, but if you handle them enough, as with most pets, they will become pretty docile and you'll be able to handle them a little more. This guy, as you can see, he's very used to being handled. He's a really awesome snake, and I treat, I try to make him seem like, I try to comfort him in the way of moving my hands, almost as if I'm supporting him like a tree limb, and he seems to be doing pretty well with me handling him, so. I'm very thankful for that, of course. Um, not all people are so lucky with bow constrictors, but these guys are usually one of the more docile compared to blood pythons and different types of snakes like that in the python family. Um, I was looking at green tree pythons and that was actually what made me get a rainbow bow constrictor was because I saw their temperament was so bad. But when I searched up on um, bow constrictors with good temperament, this guy came up and I was pretty much hooked. So they have a pretty good temperament, but as I said, I cannot stress it enough. You always, always want to hold these guys a real lot. Um, about once a day is pretty good. Um, and that is going to be the most important thing when it comes to temperament.